So this question comes from Nick S. I thought you might be able to make an interesting YouTube episode about a theoretical networking tool depicted in the TV show Person of Interest. Now let me just say, as a real technology person, if you see something in one of these movies or TV shows, it probably has nothing to do with real life, and the only reason it is able to work is because none of the people on the show actually have to deal with the real world. This is an interesting concept, but let's kind of debunk why this would actually work. So, what's depicted is a personal, proprietary, untraceable cell phone network that is off the grid. This is done by setting up the network using nodes. The nodes, and this is the clever part, are old out of use TV antennas on the tops of city buildings. Because the cell phones connected to it are not part of the normal cell phone network, they cannot be traced. I don't know much at all about this sort of thing, but I thought you might find it interesting. Do you some think something like this is possible? Uh, and this is where we get into the reality of the technology world. There are things that are technically possible, but then in the real world kind of run into the real world, as I said. So basically, in the, in the modern world, uh, if you're in the United States, Congress uh, stipulated, uh, probably about 20 years ago, that a certain point in time that telephone companies would have to be able to triangulate or find the location of every single cell phone. Um, and they said that this was for emergency services uh, reasons, right? So we came out with the, the, the 911 system uh, back in the 80s or whatnot, and that was really good for emergencies because people could pick up the phone. Uh, they could call and they say, help, my house is being burglarized or somebody just had a heart attack. Uh, basically, the 911 operator could have caller ID and what they could do is they could see the, the, the address association of the telephone number uh, from caller ID with the real address and they could send an ambulance. So even if you didn't know what your address is, they could say, okay, I see what your telephone number is. This telephone number is connected to this physical street address, so therefore the ambulance is on the way. Well, we come out with mobile phones and and that doesn't work so much anymore, right? Because your billing address might be through your house, but you're over at your grandma's. Your grandma just had a heart attack, and if they send an ambulance to your house, that doesn't help anybody because you're at your grandma's, right? So Congress, in their infinite wisdom, thought, hey, you know what would be a really nice idea is if we could triangulate the location of these cell phones for emergency services purposes. Now, I I'm just going to say here... Uh, we are going to go with the idea that it was for emergency services purposes, and we're not going to get into NSA and CIA and any of that kind of stuff. Again, this is one of those lessons in life about how one idea or type of technology can be useful for multiple roles. Not only is it good to be able to send the ambulance to your location, but we can also send a Hellfire missile. <laughs> we're not going to get into that, right? So the idea then is if uh, these phone companies can then triangulate your location, then how could you go about using some kind of cell phone uh, that would be off the, off the grid? I hate to say off the grid, because basically you're creating a different grid using a different, basically so that, so that the government couldn't, couldn't triangulate where you are. So I guess in this person of interest, what they did is they came up with their own cell phone network to allow this to happen. And that sounds really cool. That sounds really cool until you learn about the uh, uh, Federal Communications Commission, so the FCC. So one of the issues that we run into in the modern world is everybody wants to use all these new types of technology. And unfortunately, not everybody can use certain types of technology. So when we start talking about radio frequency RF waves, uh, the fact of the matter is, is at any one time, only one person or set of people can use a particular frequency, right? So if you go, um, you go into your car and you turn on an FM station 106.5, you are able to listen to the music or whatever else is coming in on 106.5 because it can only be used by that radio station. If somebody else started transmitting on 106.5 close to your location, they may be able to overpower the signal for 106.5 from the radio station and then you get into all all kinds of issues. Basically, uh, the, the most simplistic definition of jamming, so if you've heard of jamming technology, so if I'm trying to use a walkie-talkie and somebody jams it, essentially all that is happening is they're bursting uh, out energy on the specific radio frequency that you're using, and that is overpowering your transmitter and receiver on your device, therefore it can't work. So all jamming is, is putting out a signal on a specific RF frequency 
so that nobody can use that RF frequency. So the issue is, is if everybody could use all the RF frequencies willy-nilly, then essentially they're de facto jamming everybody else and our modern communication system just falls apart because cell phones use RF frequencies, radio use RF frequencies, baby monitors use RF frequencies, uh, LTE uses RF, RF frequencies, so on and so forth. So what the FCC then does is they auction off the spectrum uh, so that different um, uh, companies can basically have a monopoly on that spectrum. So your local radio station has purchased that, that station 106.5 from the FCC, from the federal government, and they can use 106.5 within a certain geographic area. So obviously the signal dies off. So multiple people can own 106.5, but they've got to be far enough apart that they're not interfering with each other. Uh, that's where if you go on, uh, let's say you, you go on a road trip, you'll notice you may have your station set to let's say 106.5, and while you're in Maryland, you're listening to country music and then you go into Philadelphia and all of a sudden it's rap let's say and the reason is is because the Baltimore station owns 106.5 for this geographic area when you go over to the Pennsylvania area that is owned by somebody else so you have all of this spectrum that is auctioned off to all of these different companies so Verizon and AT&T and uh and um, you know the radio stations and all that kind of stuff. And then we have open spectrum. So when we start talking about what 2.4 uh, gigahertz and 900 megahertz and five gigahertz, basically those spectrums uh, were opened up for public use. So essentially you can create devices to use those particular frequencies as long as they fall into a set of standards, they have to be a certain power. Um, and so basically anybody can produce equipment at that, at that thing. So here's where we run into the real world issues. So we start talking about the FCC. So the FCC is one of those government agencies that actually does a pretty decent job of doing its job. Again, you can argue about whether or not it should be doing its job, but it actually does it pretty well. It's kind of like the NSA. It's like, you're not always happy with what they do, but you got to admit, at least they're doing it. <laughs> Unlike Congress, <clears throat> right? And so basically uh, what, what happens is anytime um, any company that owns a, a certain amount of spectrum notices that there is interference on those RF frequencies, they can communicate with the FCC to lodge a complaint. And the FCC or whoever they subcontracted out to can actually go out with these really cool um, RF uh, frequency uh, uh, triangulation um, pieces of equipment. So they can actually triangulate onto your location. So, uh, so a lot of like the old pirate radio stations, right? The pirate radio stations were radio stations where people would go out and build or buy their own equipment in order to launch a radio station on the normal frequency so you could pick it up within your car radio. And so a lot of times what would happen is people would set up these pirate radio stations and then if they set them in, the, the, in one location and there was a complaint about it, basically the FCC would come out, they would detect where they are, they'd send in all the storm troopers and they, they get knocked, they, they get taken out of commission. So the issue then is, is if you're setting up your own cell phone network, right, even though it's not part of the normal cell phone network, it's still got to use RF frequencies. And so if you're using kind of normal-ish cell phones, uh, you're most likely going to be using the same RF frequencies that some other cell phone provider in your area is using. Again, Verizon or Cricket or T-Mobile or whatnot, right? And so what happens is that interference is going to be detected uh, by those those major companies. Then the FCC is going to come in, and they it really is. I, I've used the triangulation equipment. A 15-year-old or 14-year-old or a 12-year-old can use this this triangulation equipment. It is no big deal. Basically, it's very it's. If you have a a, a transmitter uh, transmitting on a certain frequency. Um, Basically, what takes the longest time to track down that transmitter is literally the amount of time to drive there. Uh, basically, because like uh, I've been on triangulation teams where you have you use two vehicles, uh, and basically each vehicle kind of narrows in and triangulates where the the, the signal is coming from, and and literally it takes longer to get your cup of coffee in order to triangulate the signal than it is to actually triangulate the signal. It's very, very, very easy. So if somebody set up their own uh, cell phone network, uh, it would be discovered, especially if it's using any of these frequencies, and then it would be shut down relatively quickly. So it's something like, I hate to say, some, somebody like terrorists uh, might be able to use it. Like if you wanted to set up one of these networks for hours, you know what I'm saying? Like you were going to do something and you wanted to set up something like this within hours so that literally there wasn't even enough time to respond to the transmitters going up, that might work. But as soon as those transmitters are up for days or weeks, 
they'll get shut down. The way you could theoretically do it is by simply setting up some kind of, of network using the open spectrum. So uh, say the, the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, the 5 gigahertz spectrum, the 900 megahertz spectrum. Uh, basically, since that's all open and available, uh, you might be able to do something uh, with that. So uh, I did a video showing you guys this open mesh networking equipment. So theoretically, uh, in a small city area, you might actually be able to use open mesh networking equipment to create your own mesh network. Uh, you don't broadcast the SSID, so nobody knows it's there. And then you could have a soft phone on your mobile phone uh, connect to that wireless network nobody knows is there and then use that to, to communicate with. But the issue with that, right, is the problem is power is range. I mean, even with, uh, you know, Cisco equipment or any of that, you don't got massive range. I mean, you just don't, right? It's just, it's just, it's just not that powerful. And so what you're going to think is like, well, then what you're going to say is like, well, Eli, if it's not that powerful, all we have to do is ramp up the power, right? We'll take that little AC wireless access point, we'll ramp up the power on it, and that means it'll be able to, to deal with a larger area. Eh, then we come back to the FCC. Uh, so in this uh, spectrum that basically anybody can use, they do have requirements for how much power these devices can put out. So basically, if you have your Wi-Fi access point, it can only put up put out enough power to to be able to send a signal to a certain area if you start ramping up the power on those devices which you again technically can do and it technically will work uh, the problem is you start putting out so much energy that goes back to you in essence start jamming all the other equipment around you as soon as that happens all it takes is a complaint to the FCC they come in with their triangulation gear and we go back to step one um, so so there you go those are kind of the thoughts on it um, setting up your own cell phone grid again it's a technical possibility so like if you are in Mogadishu if you are in Syria if you're in someplace else um, it would be totally totally feasible like there is technically there is nothing you just go out buy the equipment basically how much money do you got in your back pocket can you afford it then you do it uh, the issue is like I say here in the US and in any Western con uh, co uh, countries they'll have the same kind of FCC type stuff um, so if you set up one of these networks basically uh, you'll get shut down by those organizations because you're gonna cause havoc with every other radio frequency out there uh, so if you are in some piss poor third world country that can't afford your own version of the FCC yes you can set up your own telephone network uh, if you have your own version of the FCC no and again like I said I've, 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 I've been on triangulation teams it's like it's easy I mean it's it's so fucking easy it's just like beep, there it is you know what I'm saying so uh, so yeah that is a thought remember if you see something on movies and TV and it's technical it's just probably not true it is just so so probably not true